Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace. a really special treat for you. Thanksgiving is approaching, and if you watched my shows, you know it's my favorite American holiday. So today, we are going to be cooking turkey. But because we went to visit Red Shirt Farm in Lanesboro, Massachusetts, which is our neighbor, and got inspired by, by what we saw there, by, by the wonderful vegetables how they are growing, how they are harvested, we decided to make this into a three-part series. So today you will be watching how to make the heritage turkey because it cooks very differently than commercial turkey. You will also, uh, in, the next, in the next segment, which is going to be airing in two weeks from this one, you will be, um, you'll be learning how to make uh, sides that were inspired by the vegetables grown there. And the third episode is visiting the beautiful Red Shirt Farm and, and a little surprise, something that inspired me to make um, a dish, a condiment that I've never made before. So let's get to our turkey. Um, this is not your commercial turkey. This is heritage turkey. And you will learn more about this, this turkey and actually get to see it, to meet it, when you uh, are going to tune into our third part of, the, of this series. However, I'm going to give you a road map because um, this turkey cooks very differently than the commercial turkey. It has, um, it has a, a, a proportion of white meat and dark meat is more equal, not like huge breast, and also uh, since it's, it's been having an active life and running for seven months of its life before coming here to the studio um, to be cooked, it actually has, has muscles. And so these muscles cook very differently and have a very different flavor. And, and I guarantee you that this flavor is better than the commercial turkey. So what I did first was salting this turkey. This is called dry brining. Um, the, the turkey is sprinkled with salt, about three quarter teaspoon of kosher um, diamond salt per pound of turkey, and then sprinkled all around, and then I placed it in the refrigerator open so that the skin would dry up, and I did it on purpose, because on the one hand also you are aging the turkey, and that improves the flavor of meat as well, and on the other hand you are drying the skin, and so since this is a drier turkey, it doesn't have a, 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 as much fat, and I'll show you the fat is deposited mainly on the neck and then on the back. So we want to really slather a lot of fat, um, be it oil or butter. I chose butter today so that um, the turkey is basted during cooking and, and gets um, not, it doesn't get to dry out. Then into the cavity, I'm going to put um, some aromatics and vegetables. I already chopped them up. And what I did, I always save when I have squeezed lemon juice, I save these so that I can put them inside the birds when I roast them whole. And so I chopped them up together with some leeks. I, I'm going to use leeks later in a salad in a second episode. However, uh, I, I took the green parts that I cut away and washed them thoroughly and chopped them. Garlic, some carrots that also came from the farm, some celery, bay leaf, and also I'm going to stuff um, thyme. So as you can see, this is really um, something that we're trying to do to make it, to make it more um, aromatic and flavorful, which, which is 
um, how it's going to get infused as it's cooking and make sure that you don't really cover the whole cavity because um, because this is um, this needs you know heat needs to have space to circulate and if it's going to be overstuffed then you are going to defeat defeat the purpose so um, I stuffed it. I stuffed it now, the cavity. But I think maybe it's best left for later because first we want to put some fat under the skin and also on top. So I took the butter and I brought it to room temperature. So it's really soft now. And what I'm going to make is um, take this butter, and you can you can use food processor to put the pieces of butter into it together with some maple syrup and some chopped rosemary. I chopped some rosemary here. However, um, I decided to do it by hand. So I'm using a plastic bag and that's, you know, that's what is very convenient. Then you don't make your hands dirty. And then I'll just mash up this butter and I will add a little bit of salt there as well. And then I'm going to combine it together with my rosemary and with some maple syrup. So I'm, I'm using, this is a 12 pound turkey. I'm using three sticks of butter. I want to be really generous here and maybe a um, third of a cup of maple syrup. And so to, to just mash them together. And once you have this paste, then you will be able to put it all, all around. Um, this wonderful bird. These, these turkeys um, look really adorable and they, when we came to visit them, they all flock to us. They lead very active lives. They're outside all the time and they have um, a roost where they go at night and um, they really have happy lives and we are thankful to, to Jim and Annie Schultz, who actually, uh, um, Jim has devoted his, his life now to preserving these heritage breeds. He's raising pig, heritage pigs, and turkeys, and chickens. And um, unless we, unless we um, actually, you know, raise them for consumption, these, these breeds will become extinct. All right, so what I did, um, I used a little knife to cut through a little membrane to loosen the, the skin um, on, the, uh, on the breast. And so I'm going to stuff this butter under the skin and I'm going to switch to using just my hand because otherwise it's going to be really very inconvenient. So I'm going to push the butter under the skin and try to, um, to deposit it there, which I am very successful with. And again, I did this prior to um, starting the show. I loosened the skin. So if you don't do it in advance, then it's going to be difficult for you to put the butter inside. Okay, and then uh, on the other breast, and I'll put some also in between legs, uh, meaning between the breast and the leg. Okay, and then the other breast. And since um, I kept this bird in the refrigerator uncovered, as I told you, the, the, um, the skin has dried out and it will hold better um, the butter, otherwise it would be sliding all over the place. What I also did, I used the giblets and the neck to make a broth. Um, I added a little bit of white wine and water as well as some vegetables and I cooked to make a broth that will go on the bottom of this pan. Uh, we are doing everything in order to assure that this bird is going to be um, moist and this is all the preca pre these precautions are taken for that. Uh, so the, your roadmap is also that um, you will be covering this turkey with parchment that is going to be oiled 
and um, don't do it with foil because foil doesn't let the air in and so moisture will be accumulating there and turkey instead of crisping up will be actually steaming and that's not what you want. Okay, so let's put butter here as well and then we'll tie the legs and place it into, um, into the roasting pan. So I place a rack in the roasting pan so that um, this really has a chance to, uh, to ventilate and doesn't sit in that liquid. That's, that's a very good idea. You can also put maybe a drying rack, not a drying rack, but um, uh, you know, when you, when you cool cookies, the, the, the rack for cooling cookies or, or, or cakes. All right, so a little more butter, we'll put it all around. Okay. Okay, then I'll show you how to tent um, the pan. All right, so I think we can already place, place this inside. And this turkey is not going to be basted. The oven is not going to be opened. Um, it's going to be cooking through at a high temperature. If the bird is a bigger bird, then you can cook it at about 425 degrees. If it's a smaller bird, you can cook it at 450 degrees throughout. And this 12 pound bird is supposed to be ready in two hours. And of course, we'll let you know how it works because we're, we are going through this, this process as we are um, showing it to you. Okay. All right, so we'll take a string, tie the legs together. Okay. It looks adorable, all slathered with butter. Okay, clean our hands and put the broth on the bottom. The oven, of course, is already preheated. Um, I will show you quickly, because parchment is not big enough to cover this whole pan, so what I do, um, I take two pieces of parchment, and then I fold them together. I put them together, and then I fold them like that twice. And this way you can extend your piece of parchment because you cannot really get pieces big enough to cover this whole pan. So I already did this in advance. And we will place this and with a pastry brush, cover it with oil. And then we are going to be covering the pan and tying it with a string to make sure that it's all enclosed and that this bird is cooking um, in this very insulated uh, environment. Okay, so we prepare the string Place the parchment around. What you can do, you can have somebody help you if you have somebody at home to hold this together. Or you can tuck it under. I'm holding it with my body, as you can see, <laughs> protecting this turkey that is so precious. And tying it all around. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, now that this turkey is tied securely, we will trim 
the parchment so that it wouldn't be burning and then we will place it in the oven and you can leave it there for two hours and check you can check like after an hour and 30 minutes because in general this turkey should be bronzing and by the way the the breed of this turkey is called standard bronze but it should be getting color even under the paper but if it doesn't you can always remove it half an hour before it's ready what you can also do is because your oven is heated differently in um, front and back of the oven it might be hot at the, at the back of the oven so you might want halfway to just rotate it so that one side is um, exposed to the back the one that was in the front would be exposed to the back all right so we are going to put this beautiful bird into our preheated 450 degree oven okay and I place the rack on the bottom of the oven Right. Ah. Okay. Okay. So our bird is securely, um, um, securely sitting in the oven. Uh, one thing I forgot to uh, mention is that you need to take the turkey uh, about two hours prior to cooking it from the refrigerator because it needs to come to room temperature and that way it will be cooking evenly. Okay, we'll take a break now and we'll be right back with you. So our turkey was ready to be pulled out of the oven. It smelled amazing here, it still does. The smell is just permeating the whole studio and we cannot wait to taste it. I'm going to remove the string and then remove this parchment. And as you can see, that even, even without being open, it actually has colored so nicely. So I, I'm going to take off the string here and I can see um, the specks of rosemary deposited on the top and also inside the turkey. And I'm so, so excited to try this bird. So let's proceed to cutting it. It actually has been sitting for about 25 minutes um, and resting because you shouldn't be cutting it until it has rested for at least 15 minutes, but best for 30 minutes. During this time, all the uh, fluids are going to rush back to the center, so you are not going to lose this precious juice. And now I will take the turkey and move it onto the cutting board. And as you can see, my cutting board has uh, special, special uh, grooves here so that we wouldn't lo lose this. Um, what you can do also is since we have some vegetables there, when you are going to be scooping them out, you can place them into, into the gravy that it has formed there. And you can put it on top of the uh, stove or you can put it back into the into the oven just to roast, to continue roasting. And this is exactly what I'm going to do. I will put it there so that these vegetables continue cooking there and flavoring this, this wonderful gravy that we, that we have. So all these great herbs, they probably contributed to all the wonderful aroma. So let me lift it and just shake it out. That's much easier. Okay. And I will drop this back into the oven to continue cooking and creating our 
delicious um, gravy. Okay. Okay, all right. So now we are going to cut this bird. First, we start with the legs. And the skin is so crispy, you can hear it making this sound as I'm cutting it. So you'll turn it around and then you are going to cut approaching the joint okay and it's cracking easily and then we are going to just twist it a little bit to expose more of a joint and it's ready so we are going to place it here this is a job that I always get at our Thanksgiving meal to cut the turkey everybody trusts me with this job Okay, as you can see that these, these, this turkey looks very different than the commercial turkey. Its legs are um, larger and there is a big, higher amount of dark meat. If you want to, you can always shave this meat, but we are not going to, to do it. So let me take care of the thigh and then I will show you how to cut the breast. This turkey is quite hot so I can feel it. That's why it takes me longer to cut it. Okay. So in order you can you can put the whole thigh or you can just shave the thigh off the bone and put, and put pieces so that it would be easier for people to eat. Okay, so since this turkey is still quite hot, I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to put the whole thigh, but you, you have the idea. Now, we are going to do the same thing with a wing as we did with a leg. We are going to find the joint and cut it exactly where the joint is so that it would be easy to separate. Okay, and by the way, the carcass is a wonderful thing to use for your stock. So please do not throw out the bones because they are fantastic to make a stock with. Look how luscious and moist this meat is. So this turkey had very good life. It has not been bred for meat. It is a heritage brand that is very close to the wild turkeys. It has the same kind of life. It lives six to seven months outside eating. Um, Jim feeds it non-GMO grain but also he feel they, they get the bugs and what he's doing and what is so time consuming besides for them having this good happy life that they rotate their pastures. So that when they are done with eating the grass, which they love, and then um, the, the soil is depleted there. So they move from place to place so that um, they can have fresh grass. So as you can see, look at this beautiful, beautiful fat right by the neck. The reason you would never see this kind of fat on a commercial turkey. And these turkeys develop this fat because they protect them from, from the cold weather. And this is why this fat, beautiful white fat, is deposited on the neck. So. Um, let me taste it first, because I know that um, I need to let you know how good this turkey is. The meat is very flavorful. 
the texture is very close to broad breasted in terms of you know it has nice moisture however I never experienced this kind of flavor in, in a um, broad, wide broad breasted uh, turkey that was bred commercially. The meat on the thigh is a little bit tougher than the breast. However, even though it's a little chewy, but it's cooked through and it's delicious. So when you assemble your tray, then you can use sprigs of um, sage for, for decoration or the, um, the other herbs like thyme and rosemary that you used with the turkey. Put a persimmon here. And then when the gravy is ready, you can thicken it um, with a little bit of cornstarch and you have wonderful meal that is waiting for you to enjoy and and you know that this is a very very special bird that uh, was grown locally so what i especially appreciate about living in this area is that um, food and farm to me are words that belong together in the same sentence that we, fo we forgot, we, we kind of moved away from, from the farm eating. But here we are surrounded by our farms and by farmers who work very hard to provide us with this wonderful food. So it's going to be a very, very special Thanksgiving because all, all this bounty came from the Red Shirt Farm and we are surely going to be enjoying it. Um, as well as giving thanks for everything that we have in our lives. Thank you for joining my show, and please come back. Support for this program is provided in part by Widow's Fresh Marketplace.